everybody today we're going to talk about the mux block deep dive down into all the functions of it does and uh what is a mux, mux block you ask well it's a multiplexer switch uh, multiplexer switch means there's multiple inputs but there can only be one output based on the input okay so let's see let's show you what i'm talking about here uh we're just going to go to a blank cct page which i, I kind of tell everybody don't do but uh, try to use the question and answers to get you there but if you want a blank one just go down to monitoring supervisor and control only and skip through all the questions and boom there you go a completely blank page what you do want to do is set your field device first that'll help you if you're doing any kind of scheduling or whatever so if you do that then you can come down here and you'll have schedules and trends and all that fun stuff if you don't do that then it won't I misspelled test but that's okay all right so to get to the mux block mux block is actually in any kind of activity block so we're just going to add an activity block and we're going to view the logic and the mux block is found under selection. If you don't know that, you can just type in mux. And that's going to pull up all of these mux blocks right here. So, looking at it, it kind of tells you what it is. The first part of it is what you want to get out of it. That's going to be the, the output, right? I know it says I-O, uh, input-output, but it's basically what you want to get out of it. So what what do you want to get out of it? Do you want to get a boolean out of it? Do you want to get a numeration out of it? Or do you want to get a float out of it, right? And then the next one is the mode. This is what's going to switch it. This is what's going to do all the action. So you have your choice between boolean, which in Johnson Controls is always true-false, enum, which can be almost anything, and that's it. We don't have a float. You can't do a float mode mux block but you can do a float uh, output mux block so let's let's go through each one of these a little bit we have a boolean input a boolean output well that's fairly simple so looking at it okay so this is a true false mode right here and then that mode is going to get you one of these outputs right so default we can change that default to false to make it more sense for you so if this mode is false whatever we put on input one it's going to output whatever that is so if we want it to be true we'll output a true if the input is true then whatever is going to output on output two right here so if we want to flip true and false we could do that boom we just trip flip true and false but before we simulate it we need to add some inputs and outputs so if i input a boolean it'll be outputting a boolean not even worried about naming these things i just want to be able to see what's going on so now we're good so we're simulate save changes no simulate so as you see this is false coming in it's true coming out if we change this to true now it's false coming out see we switched it fairly simple on a boolean to boolean do you like to stop simulation yes now let's go back to another mux block which is down here under selection and let's do the enumo boolean output so we're going to output a true false so we can go ahead and put a boolean out here output and we're going to input an enumeration so the standard is always off on 
right? So, what do we want this thing to do? Our choices are off on. Make this put off there. So, if the mode is off, we want it to be false. If the mode is on, we want it to be true. Let's do here. Be careful here, because as you see, input 2 is on the top above input 1 here. I don't know why they do it. I think it's a glitch. But you have to make sure input 2 and input 2 down here match, not just the what's on top, what's on bottom. All right? So now we'll apply that. Go back into simulation. Start simulation. And we got off and false. And if we command this on, we have true. Okay? Fairly simple so far. Now, we got back down here to selection. And let's look at the next one down the list. Uh, Boolean mode, enum out. Wow, that's that's always the same. Let's do a enum mode float out. Okay, this is where we'll get a little bit more advanced. So right now you see we we only have two here, right? But we can actually have more than two. We can have as much as the units that we have in the mode. Let me show you. So if you go to this IO modification here, if I try to add one right now, it's not going to let me. See, I can only have two. That's because it's only off on here. So let's change the off on to something else. Awk mode. Okay. Awk mode one has to be default. So one, two, three, four. We have four four different modes here for awk mode. Okay. So now I can add two more because I already have two. I can go four. Boom. So let me show you. Maybe mode one we want occupied. Mode two unoccupied. Something in bypass. And something in auto. Okay. Boom. So now one is going to be occupied, two is going to be unoccupied, three is going to be bypass, and four is going to be auto, right? So what can we do here? Well, I mean, we can modify this occupied. We want it to go to 100% occupied. Okay. Perfect. Oh, see, I screwed up. That's not occupied. That's unoccupied. One is down here. So you gotta be careful. You gotta watch where the where the numbers line up. Two is unoccupied. Three is bypass. I'll leave that, that zero right now. And four is auto. We'll leave that. We can also, we don't have to do everything inside here. We can bring floats, input floats in from the outside. So we said three was bypass so now i got a bypass so this is more like a pass through block okay and then this was auto four was auto boom so now, that being a bypass block, now I have connections. So if I had some other logic outside, I could connect this and make it do something. For the time being, I'm just going to put a 30 in here. And I'll put a 50 in bypass. And then we'll run back to the simulator and see what that looks like. Oh, well, we're not done yet. We gotta have an activity float output. That's gonna show us our output here. If we don't have that, it's not gonna give me a number right here. So that's why I have to have it there. 
and then I need enumeration input. Now, it's not going to let me connect it right now. Well, I don't want to connect it right now. Let's just say that. Because if I connect it, it's going to get all messed up. I want to change this to the aught first. So, come over here. Come down here. Awk, and I did awk mode. Apply. Now, when I hook it, it'll be fine. And we'll give me errors. So simulate this. Simulation. Now, I'm occupied at 100. I'm unoccupied at 0. Bypass at 50 and then auto at 30. So depending on what my input is here is what I get the single output here. And again, this auto could be ramping from an, a PID on another block somewhere, right? Because we have this bypass through here. So all we have to do is make a connection here to that, that other block, and that's ramping up and down. This this 30 is moving, right? So you don't have to just use what's in here. Configure, yes. Boom. So let me show you, delete this, show you what it looks like if I, if I screwed up and didn't change the enumeration first. See, contact not allowed. So I have to change the source. So when I changed the source, what did that do? It changed the occupied mode for me. Good. It changed it on this side and not the, it didn't screw up over here. So that's what it did. So go back down here and look at the other things. So this, remember, this is your inputs and outputs. This is your switch. This is what's switching, doing all the switches. I hope you got a better understanding of the mugs block.